It was the year 2008. Steven Spielberg brought back the adventure with Indiana Jones, the MCU made its dashing debut with Iron Man, and Disney's bitch Zac Efron had officially ended his run with the multi-billion dollar high school musical franchise. After his success, he was offered many big roles such as Roderick in the Wimpy Kid trilogy and was even rumored for a Ferris Bueller's Day Off remake, which we'll probably get into someday. However, Efron took down these roles to go for some more original, something fresh. Then came Seventeen again. No, not that Seventeen again. <laughs> Seventeen again was a fresh new comedy with the helm of director Burr Steers. He directed one episode of Weeds and the Golden Globe nominated film Ig B Goes Down. The screenplay was written by Jason Filardi, who had many hits under his belt such as Bringing Down the House, starring Steve Martin and Queen Latifah. This was a passion project for both Steers and Filardi, as the two had been trying to get this off the ground for almost six years. They pitched this idea to Universal and Paramount, who unfortunately turned it down. Thankfully, CEO of New Line Cinema at the time, Mr. New Line, was impressed with their concept and gave them the green light. Burr and Jason had even signed a contract with Mr. New Line for a planned four-part picture deal, in case the first one ever grows to become a sleeper hit. Once Efron finally got his hands on the script, he immediately signed on. In his words, he called the movie unique and pseudotastic, which is not even a real word. After Efron got on board, Friends co-star Matthew Perry immediately joined the cast, as well as Leslie Mann from Knocked Up. It seemed the movie was all going according to plan. They had their director, their writer, and their big star, which is what most Hollywood movies occasionally have. April 14th, 2009, the movie is finally released to the world. It was received mixed by critics, but struck a chord with audiences around the globe, mainly the Chinese. With only a budget of $20 million, the movie grossed around $60 million domestically and $135 million worldwide. So, it was technically a success. Director Burr Steers was very pleased with the outcome, as well as writer Jason Filardi. However, Mr. New Line Cinema had an opposite feelings. He was quite unsure if he wanted to move forward with the franchise, as well as construction on the 17 Again coaster, which would have replaced Revenge of the Mummy at Universal Studios Orlando. A few days later, Mr. New Line Cinema decided to rip the contract in half, parting ways with Jason and Burt. They had laid down many ideas for the three sequels. The next installment was titled 18 Again, but this time in the perspective of Leslie Mann's character trying to win back her husband. In other terms, it was going to be the same movie, but with a twist. The third act would involve a destruction of the city with a gigantic squid. For that alone, the budget would have boosted up to $225 million. That's $205 million more than its predecessor. And the first one didn't even make that much amount of money, so why even go through it? In an interview with Forbes magazine, Burr Steers opened up about his vision on the sequel. He stated, I was going for a more grand scale, because with sequels, you always have to go bigger. As I watched the rough cut for the first one, it really got me thinking. How about the next one is the exact same thing, but this time it's with the wife, and with the 300 foot squid monster. Jason loved the idea and printed out a screenplay in only 5 days. It seemed like we were making movie magic, but I guess you'll never see it, and that's reality though. After the deal for pretty much their Star Wars was basically drowned, Jason and Burr decided to go their own routes and tackle their own projects. That's until... Jason and Burr had no big hits ever since Seventeen Again. It seemed that this movie was their Mona Lisa, or their Slam Dunk Ernest. However, one night in 2011, Jason and Burr coincidentally crossed paths at an infamous midget bar in downtown Los Angeles titled Short Stuff. Don't ask. They started to sit down and talk about their recent projects and realized how miserable their life had gotten. Burr looked over at Jason and asked, Man, if only we could have done it again. Again. This immediately sparked Jason to rush to his apartment and get back to his typewriter. The very next day, Jason drove over to Burr's trailer shack and pitched him a sequel to Seventeen Again. He put it under the title, Seventeen Again, Again. After reading him the basic outline, Burr was ecstatic about it and both rushed over to New Line Cinema. They pitched this idea to the new CEO of New Line, Mr. New Line Cinema Jr. 
who took the rightful place of his dad ever since he passed away in 2010. Mr. Newline Cinema Jr. found the movie to be bold and daring. Although the script wasn't completely finished, they still had a clear vision of the plot. The movie was going to revolve around Michael Donald's father, Jeremy, who wished to turn back to 17 so he could fuck his son's wife for revenge. It was described as Empire Strikes Back with the father versus son conflict. The movie was officially a go, Zac Efron signed back on a $15 million contract with returning actors Leslie Mann and Matthew Perry. The biggest problem was for them to find the perfect choice for the role of Jeremy O'Donnell. First number one choice was Henry Winkler. However, Mr. Newline Cinema Jr. wanted to go for someone more young and hip like Tom Cruise. Burr found this quite frustrating and confusing. He stated, He wanted to get Tom Cruise for the picture. But Tom Cruise is like the same age as Matthew Perry, probably even younger, it just made no fucking sense. Did Mr. Newline Cinema not birth any of their children for this position? The war between Burr and Mr. Newline Jr. kept dragging, to the point where everyone was feeling fatigued. During that gap, Jason Filardi gave up halfway through his script and moved to Michigan with his family. Zac Efron signed on for other million dollar roles and Matthew Perry sadly passed away. It was Perry's death that really got to Burr, making him completely drop out of the project, and New Line Cinema Jr. decided to pull the plug on Seventeen again, again, uh, again. None of the cast or crew have discussed the process of the sequel except for the boom mic operator George Pierce who was interviewed on Movie Clan Podcasts. He stated, Burr brought me back for the sequel, however, the sequel never got made. By the way, does this look like a lump to you? Although this movie will never see the light of day, it still lives on in our hearts as the original gets replayed almost every day on TBS. And it makes us feel 17 again. <laughs>